that Black Myth Wukong PC review from IGN's guys. Just saw it soon. Let's go, man. What's up, Mitchell? And just a quick note about this review. As part of the embargo agreement set for this game, I am unable to show you footage beyond Chapter 2, which presents a bit of a problem because a lot of the technical issues that I have with this game that I specifically call out in this review occurred after Chapter 2. Uh -oh. So I'm unable to actually show them. So we're going to do two different video reviews this time. This first one will abide by their restrictions and only show footage from the first two chapters. And then when the game comes we'll out. We'll also be posting a more complete review with the relevant footage added in on launch day. Okay, with that, makes sense. With the review for that makes sense. All right, let's see, let's see what IGN thinks about it. Woo, look at that look. Let's see what IGN thinks about it, I'm ready. I've been so utterly blown away, yet simultaneously so unbelievably frustrated by a game as I have been with Black Myth Wukong. This is undoubtedly one of the most ambitious and impressive action games I've played. Oh, it's wow. It's stunningly gorgeous. It's combat is fantastic. Ooh. It's incredibly challenging, but always satisfying to overcome. And the setting is refreshingly unique and steeped in rich Chinese culture. Yo, I said this in the last one, in, in the last video. Where's his head at? Despite all of that, it often feels like it's barely holding it all together. I suffered numerous crashes, despite having a top-of-the-line setup with the GeForce RTX 4090. Not to mention the multiple times I fell through the ground and died in the final phase of a boss fight. Or the way characters would randomly switch from English to Chinese, or the way the dialogue audio would just drop out altogether I, and leave- I mean, that doesn't sound too bad though, bro. Is that a fly? It's a rickety roller coaster for sure, and there were definitely spots during the ride where I was not having a great time. Okay. But taken as a whole, this is one adventure where the bumps are worth it. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Black Myth Wukong. So I'm expecting like a full rating, whatever, on launch day. A follow up to the classic novel Journey to the West by Wu Chengen, a book that I only personally know thanks to very loose adaptations. Oh, I don't know that book. I'm gonna be honest with you. And enslaved Odyssey to the West. That surface level familiarity didn't help much though, as the interpretation that the developers at Game Science have crafted here is laden with references to characters and events from the novel without doing a great job of bringing you up to speed on who Sun Wukong is or what he encountered on his titular journey. Man, he got the monkey pots. Look at it, look at him. Was, what his history with Wukong is and what the significance of certain encounters were because otherwise I'd have been completely lost at times. You play as the destined one. A oh, literal oh. monkey who wakes up one morning and decides to set out on a roughly 40-hour journey to locate the six relics of Wukong. That's something that I would do. That's something that, that I would do. The storytelling is fairly unremarkable, largely due to a mute protagonist and side characters that aren't given enough screen time to develop. Each of the six self-contained chapters culminates with a stunningly gorgeous animated vignette that tells a short story about that chapter's main antagonist. Okay. Each one is done in a completely different art style, with one drawn to look like a storybook, another using stop motion animation and another done in the style of an anime every single one of them oh is my beautiful goodness and oh and my goodness wish that the main hey the fighting looks crazy in this game so far bro oh he's tweaking out my initial read on wukong was that it was a soul's life <laughs> given the checkpoint system the stamina bar that governs your actions in combat and the dodge heavy fighting style but as it yeah, turns piece out, him up. Kong has more in common with traditional action games, like what you might expect from Bayonetta developer Platinum Games, than oh. it does with anything that From Software has made. Most of the usual Souls-like conventions are missing. There's no penalty for death outside of respawning at the nearest checkpoint. You don't use a shared currency to level up your stats and purchase items or upgrades. And while there is gear and stats to consider, you largely just go and swap out the old equipment with the new, as opposed to making choices as to what kind of weapon or. Piece I mean, of they most likely want you to use upgrade. to use and like a different a weapon for like different bosses. Sites, like ditching those mechanics feels like the right move for the game that Wukong is trying to be. It's far more forgiving. Focus. Oh yeah, some of these bosses the are. Oh yeah, these bosses are weird looking, bro. Your steps to regain your lost currency after dying. And Wukong is a bro. He's holding his head like a football, bro. To be clear, though, when I say it's more forgiving, I don't mean that it's any less difficult than a From Style game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that between this and Elden Ring: Shadow of the Air Tree, I had more difficulty getting through Wukong's toughest challenges. Oh no! I mean, bro, because they fight back, bro. Bro, you're literally but fighting against people time, with weapons, bro. Like, never felt unfair, in Elden Ring, bro, you can, like, hit their foot a thousand times and kill them. A like, look at this. Like, bro, we're fighting patterns, Smokey the Bear. Figuring out where I can maximize my punishment windows and tweaking my loadout in ways that made the best use of my chosen powers. 
Bro, like these, bro, look at these bosses. Like these bosses, they're actually fighting back, bro. Combat in Black Myth Wukong is simple and elegant, thanks in part to some tools that are really fun to play around with. Yo, is that a fro- a delicate balance of Bro, was that Strek? Gameplay mixed with careful resource management that largely revolves around a focus meter, which builds up when you land hits and perfectly dodge enemy attacks. Yo. You gain a focus point whenever that meter fills up, which you can then spend in the middle of a light attack combo for a varied combo, or you can just use a heavy attack on its own for a powerful strike that can be charged even further if two, three, or even four focus points are consumed all at once. Oh my also goodness! Have access to a small handful of spells governed by a mana meter that are versatile enough to be useful in a wide array of situations. The immobilized spell, for instance, freezes enemies for a short time, allowing you to get in some quick hits and potentially Yo, stagger these them are to like, allow for even more free damage. I don't, I don't mean to pause it. I usually don't pause it, but I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. These are like some of the weirdest looking bosses that I've seen, and I've said this in like the previous like Black Metal Kong like whatever video, bro. These are like these bosses, bro, look very weird, but like it's also cool at the same time. So I'll let it go. Cloud Step turns you invisible and creates a decoy for your enemies to focus on while you break away. Heal up and then hit your foe with a surprise attack. That hey, that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That was hard. You into a statue that will cause an enemy's attack to bounce right off of you, giving you an opportunity for a counterattack. Ring of Fire creates a barrier around you that will initially repel enemies and grant you some health restoration, along with enhancing any stat altering drinks that you may use while standing inside of it. And finally, there's my personal favorite, a plug of many, uh -oh. which lets you make multiple clones of yourself to all gang up on an enemy. Man, they on that Naruto stuff, bro. Ooh, 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 fight back, fight back. Oh, yeah, he's getting jumped. Oh, yeah, that man's getting... Yo, 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 he's and actually getting that, jumped right now. also got transformations, which allow you to morph into powerful creatures that you've already bested in battle. What's really cool about these is that they don't cost any mana, they're tied to a very lengthy cooldown instead, and they turn you into a totally different character. Yo, bro, look at, bro, look at the effects off the... Oh, my God. Bro, look at the effects off the sword, off the thing. Bro, oh, I want to go back, but I'm not going to do that. It's a wolf with a fiery. It's a long light. video. I'm not going to do that. Lightning fast dash attack. When you defeat him, you'll gain his transformation and be able to do that very same dash attack to your enemies. And once you build up its focus meter, you'll even be able to do a hugely powerful leaping strike that can ignite foes and deal damage over time to them. And then finally, there are spirit skills, which are earned by defeating certain more powerful versions of enemies and absorbing their essence into your gourd. And These what you're absor you're absorbing their what their essence really? Attack and are also tied to a fairly lengthy cooldown. Ooh. But it's great to be able to, for example, use the Wandering White's powerful headbutt attack. Ooh, to get an the headbutt of death! An enemy. These spirit skills can also be leveled up, which makes it so that even the early game spirits never lose their strength as the campaign rolls on. It's an excellent blend of options, especially when mixed with some truly incredible boss fights. And Wukong introduces all these elements at a thoughtfully measured pace, so I never felt overwhelmed. Make no mistake, the Destined One is extremely powerful. Yeah, bro, his name is the Destined One. What did, what did we expect here? And being in control of him is definitely a heck of a power trip. Even beyond the many powers and abilities he has at his disposal, nothing beats the feeling of just slamming a 50-foot bow staff down onto an enemy's head. Oh my good but bro, that bro, that attack is crazy. My spells due to the fact that mana restoration is actually very difficult. This is where the resource management aspect of combat comes into play. I had to carefully consider what spells were actually worth the mana cost, whether I should save them for a more difficult second phase of a fight, and whether or not I could capitalize on the opportunity if I were to spend the mana in the first place. For instance, even though it's my most powerful spell, I often had to hold off on casting my Pluck of Many spell that duplicates my character since it has an extremely high mana cost. If I cast it at a bad time, the boss could simply wipe out all of my clones with an AoE attack before they even got a chance to get some damage in. Sometimes the adjustment I had to make when I was stuck on a boss was a simple change in how I used my abilities, and the act of coming up with a new strategy and having it pay off was always extremely satisfying. Hey, that headbutt. <laughs> that headbutt is a nasty, bro. Amount of enemy variety in its regular fights. Level design is of the wide linear variety usually with a clear main path that leads from checkpoint to checkpoint, but plenty of opportunities to venture off that path to discover optional goodies. The rewards for exploration are great too. I've found rare crafting materials to make new weapons and armor, special enemies that drop a new spirit skill, curio items that I could equip to enhance my build, and treasure chests that might permanently increase my max health, mana, or stamina, all of which made the time that I took to find them well spent.
On top of that, there are also several. Wait, so what was the problem? He, bro, he items what was the problem? I, I don't. I still haven't figured out, and plenty of more reasons to stray from the beaten path and keep an eye. It sounds like he enjoyed the game so far. Like I don't. The main one being that Wukong is one of the most gorgeous games I've ever played. Every environment is brimming with oh. from the chip pieces of bark on the trees. Oh, wowzers. Okay. The real time deformation of the snow as the destined one moves through it while dragging his staff along. I will, okay. That snow part is hard. The Like, the snow looks actually real. Bro, that look like, like, bro, that look like Buffalo, New York snow. Like, yeah, bro, that snow looked deep. And the fact that they were like, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. That's hard. That's honestly The animation hard. is impeccable, too. With wonderful touches and flourishes, like the way your character will do a little hop step when locked onto an enemy, then change to strafing around them as opposed to just running straight on while keeping their head turned. Hey, the dodging the while your past self is still there is nice. I'll admit that. Drum thumping battle themes and melodic flutes and chimes adding to the air of wonder and mystery as you explore the unknown. All that said, this game really would have benefited from a map, plain and simple. The lands you explore in Wukong are beautiful, no doubt, but they're far too big and too crammed with secrets to not give you some sort of navigational help, especially the second and third chapters. <sighs> this, along with the fact that it's aggravatingly hard to tell what obstacles can actually be climbed over and what's an invisible wall. Brother, that's any game with rocks. I I'm sorry. Listen, my bad for it for like, I don't want to, you know. Mitchell, shout out to you. Brother, that's any game with rocks. Have you ever played uh, a Season 1 Warzone? <laughs> Have you ever played Season 1 Warzone? That, bro, if your game has any of these rocks in, bro, that these are like the most unstoppable rocks ever. You cannot climb these, bro. You would have to break the X or the A to get over these rocks. That, Bro, I'm, listen, I, I'm not even like trying to defend the game or whatever, bro. These rocks are the worst rocks of all time, bro. If you ever in a video game ever see these rocks, bro, go up, bro. Take the long way because these rocks are undefeated. I'm going to be honest with you. can make exploration quite cumbersome. It's a good thing that the rewards are worth it. The monkey's paw curls. However, it's hard not to feel like all of Wukong's splendor and detail came at a great cost. I experienced numerous crashes, with one particular heartbreaker happening right after defeating an extremely tough boss that I then had to defeat again. Several others okay, were more that, minor that's, and that's typically happen as I was loading up a new chapter or fast traveling to another level. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, that boss looks crazy. That boss looks, ab I'm gonna be honest with you, that boss looks absolutely crazy. But they eventually add up to a lot of frustration. In addition to that, several times during important cutscenes, all dialogue, audio, and subtitles would drop out completely, leaving me without any clue as to what was being talked about and no way to rewatch the cutscene. Characters would occasionally switch to speaking Chinese all of a sudden, despite me having the audio set to English. The lip flaps of the English dub often don't even remotely match what's being spoken. And most of the journal entries you find along the way haven't even been localized yet into English. The worst, though, was one particular fight in which the boss would plunge me down through the ground during the transition to its final phase, only to have me fall through the world once I regained control of my character. This kept on happening to the point where I thought my game was unavoidably bugged and I wouldn't be able to reach the end. But my insanity of trying the same thing over and over again eventually yielded a different result for no discernible reason. These are the kinds of technical problems that game science will hopefully look to address in post-launch patches. And it's not outside the realm of possibility, as even Cyberpunk 2077 was eventually whipped into shape after its own buggy launch. I hope that those fixes come swiftly, because while I still wholeheartedly think that the things that Black Myth Wukong does so right are worth dealing with those problems, I would love to be able to recommend it without those caveats. Were they giving in the verdict? Still? All right, all right let's see. Game science. They, IGN's gonna get. He's gonna give it a. Mitchell's gonna give it a. He's gonna give it an eight. I'm giving it a ten. I've seen enough so far. I, I, I'm giving it a ten. I'm gonna be honest with you. Debut action game. Black Myth Wukong is mostly a great success. He's, he's gonna give it an eight. Despite some major tech Watch this. Marks and localization if I'm right, you gotta uh, subscribe. 
combat is fantastic. Look, watch this. A great balance of careful resource management watch this. and lightning fast switch reaction game. Think I'm lying? Watch this. tested my skills as much as Elden Ring ever has. Despite it being a more traditional action game than from software style. I won't even Not look. Not only that, but there are a ton of exciting boss battles. I won't even a look. A variety of enemies and the world they inhabit is an absolute treat for the eyes and ears. It's story has going to give it an eight. I won't even look, bro. Too much on having prior knowledge of the events of Journey to the West, and mm -hmm. it really could have used a map to make its rewarding exploration measure up to the strength of the combat. Uh huh. All said, its strengths more than carry it through, making Black Myth Wukong a great action game that could be even greater if game <laughs> science gets above. You gotta subscribe, that. bro. I don't know, what, bro. Listen, I don't know how I even guessed that. First of all, shout out to Missile from IGN. I don't know why, bro, but he was gassing it up too much. Even though he started off the, uh, off the video saying, hey, like, guys, even though I had, like, the like the most fun ever uh, playing this game, and even though this game looks like actual heaven itself, uh, there was some, there was, you know, there was some technical difficulties, whatever. Yeah, bro, I've heard that one a thousand times before. Not saying that he's lying or whatever, but, like, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. He's basically, he gassed it up so much that I was like, bro, like, wh like what's the problem again? I kind of forgot that he said there was technical difficulties, uh, but then he started to get uh, technical difficulties. Literally, at the end, I was like, you know what? There's no, he's not going to give it a 10. There's no shot. The last, uh, the, like the last time IGN gave a game a 10 out of 10 was like GTA. And they almost gave that a 9 out of 10. And I was like, all right, cool. Obviously, a 10 out of 10, that's like a rarity or whatever. Um, there's no shot. It, it would be a, a 9 out of 10. There's, I just don't see IGN doing that. Um, 7 out of 10 would be too low because he said that this game uh, is basically better than Elden Ring. So I'm like, you know what? It got to be an 8. It got to be an 8 out of 10. And so, listen, I got it right. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel from this. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the uh, problems that he stated from, and again, he played the game, so we're not going to sit here and act like, you know, that we know everything, whatever. This guy played the game, so we kind of have to take his word for it. But uh, to be honest, you know, just about everything, a lot of the um, problems that he said could be fixed in, like, patches as soon as the launch comes out. Now, to be fair, a lot of video games do have bugs. Now, again, to be fair, on the other page, you know, some games do come out and they don't really have a lot of these, you know, uh, bugs and nothing like that. So, th that I mean, that's a pity. But at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of these patches, a lot of these uh, problems could be fixed with, like, you know, like, first first week, second week, like, updates or whatever. They patch it up and then boom, boom, boom. Like, those patches that he named, like, the whole, like, language thing, like, it would change language and, like, you know, uh, how, like, the game would crash or whatever, bro. That's, like, a simple one or two updates. I, I, I think it's, like, a one update, so... Uh, I don't think that, you know, um, it's anything, like, too detrimental or whatever. He said the game looks good. He said that uh, that that the, that the that the gameplay was perfect. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I've said the gameplay was perfect, too. He even said that, bro, he even said that the boss's gameplay, whatever, is almost better than Elder Rings. I mean, bro, he was even, bro, this is how you know, like, and, bro, they were gassing Elder Ring up. This, and I was like, bro, like, and this is how you know, like, they were going to give it, like, an 8 plus, like, 8, 9, 10, or whatever. When he said that, what did he say? I think he said that uh, that like fighting the like fighting the boss in this game is like better than fighting a boss in Elden Ring. I was like, oh yeah, GGs. They're giving it the eight, nine, ten. It has to be. The only way, because obviously they're not gonna give it a ten because of like you know all the technical technical difficulties, whatever. That could be fixed with an update. So I'm not really gonna sit here and act like, oh my god, well Black Mythical Kong, you should be perfect, like bro, like a lot of those. I'm not. Come on, it, it's not that serious. But again, to be honest with you, bro. Um, we've reacted to multiple, multiple, multiple videos of Black Myth Wukong gameplay. And, bro, we've seen, like, bro, the, bro, like, the combat is amazing. Um, he said that he has some difficulties or whatever, but it is what it is. Uh, again, I'm not even taking that, like, to heart or whatever. I know that an update could fix that. So, um, yeah, comment down below, man. If you guys have to, you know, rate the game pre-rating. This is a predict, a predict rating before the game comes out on the 20th. What would you guys give it so far based off of what you've seen, okay? Not based, not, not based off of, um, you know, what you played or whatever or a demo or whatever. Based off of what you've seen and all the gameplay that's on the internet, uh, what would you give the game so far? The game comes out on the 20th, so I'm pretty excited about that. Other than that, man, comment down below. What do you, what do you guys think about my reaction? Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And 